In the previous days, Sirauji spoke about Sambodhi, which is noble path knowledge, or it means the person who is practicing to gain this knowledge. He talked about the causes for this person to come to be, or the supports for support, supports for this type of knowledge to arise. And these are called Sambo Janga. It doesn't occur without a cause, this Sambodhi. We don't know it through reading. It doesn't occur because we wish for it to happen. It only happens if the supporting factors, if the causes are fulfilled. So if one really wants to know true nature, sabhava, dhamma, for, uh, starting from the basics, then one needs to fulfill the causes. And to understand this is very important. It's like this in the world too. Whether we're um, trying to gain worldly education or whether we're trying to make a living Good work is like this, that one has to fulfill the causes in order to complete, to gain what we want. So without that, there's no way to succeed without fulfilling the causes. So yogis should understand this. To meditate is to make ourselves basically true human beings. Our physical and verbal behavior should be clean. And the mind also needs to be clean. When we learn how to keep the mind clean, then we are able to keep our mind humane. And Further, to really know the things that are talked about in the texts, not, not just from reading, but to know them experientially for oneself. When one does that, then one is distinctly different from ordinary people. This knowledge is important. So the Buddha spoke about the method in many ways, and at present, Sayadawji has been speaking about Sambhojanga, these factors of the noble path knowledge, or the causes for one who practices to gain that knowledge. And for one who wants to... um, Sorry, Sayadawji has been speaking about this from both theory and practice. So if one wants to become a true human being, if one wants to be able to keep one's mind truly humane, and if one wants to develop a knowledge that is above, that is special among all types of human knowledge, then just listen carefully to the Dhamma talks, to what is being said. When one listens carefully, one will gain the, one will learn how to gain the benefits. And the benefits of the practice are not small, they are excellent. In the realm of the Buddha's teachings, in the realm of Buddhist culture, Satipatthana is the most important thing. In food, the foods we eat, there are curries, and without salt, these curries do not taste good. So we have to put in some salt, we have to put in salt. A curry without salt, without any salt, is flavorless. But with it, it has, it is tasty. So to make our human life complete, satipatthana is needed in the way that salt is needed in food. 
without satipatthana our life isn't complete and this work of satipatthana is the most important task a human being can do things which are extremely important for us to do have all have four characteristics the first is that it must be done satipatthana is a task that must be done and secondly it is a task that must be done by ourselves we can't buy something and ob- obtain it we can't do it by proxy no one else can do it for us we have to do it by ourselves third it has to be done on time and in time it has to be done regularly without stopping and starting without stopping to talk without stopping to gaze and it has to be done in time which means it has to be done when we are still young enough and healthy enough to do this work and the fourth uh, factor the fourth quali- quality of this task of satipatthana and tasks which are extremely important is that it brings great benefits and just the first benefit brought by the practice is purity of mind and this is really the the essence of all things beneficial brought by the practice so um um sorry so the in every task everything that is important for a human being to do has these four characteristics and satipatthana practice also has these four characteristics so it is extremely important for us to do and this is why sadoji is emphasizing the task of satipatthana and it's said that Uh, in the text that after de- when after developing the f- satipatthana that the seven factors of enlightenment the seven bhojangas are automatically developed are automatically fulfilled so in order to develop the seven factors called the bhojangas when uh, whenever there's kaya matter arising one has to note it every single time every single time there's a feeling good bad neutral one has to observe it every time there's an act of consciousness thinking imagining planning and so on every time that arises one has to note it observe it every time there are general actions general behaviors damas that arise one has to observe them one has to observe these four without a break whenever they arise whatever arises whatever becomes evident we have to observe it and this is what is meant by the word anupasana the prefix anu means repeatedly so and pasana means observation or knowing so one has to repeatedly observe and know there has to be this repeated observing and knowing and one who possesses this type of knowledge is called anupasi what is the essence of anupasana where should this anupasana be done it is said kaye the observation should be done on the group of matter rupa kaya some rupa kaya some matter has not yet arisen and some matter is not easy to see it is not evident so what type of rupa kaya what type of matter we should observe is the one has arisen and is evident 
So we should, we don't need to observe what hasn't arisen. We don't need to observe what we can't see clearly, what, we, what is not evident. So, and this kaya, this has the nature of arising and then passing away. To say it pass away, passes away means that it dies. If it dies, this is no good. This is not satisfactory. And it does this by itself, on its own. It's just process. And it is not elegant or beautiful. So these are the four qualities the Buddha said that kaya has. This kaya, which has four qualities, one has to observe it. So how does one observe it? One observes, observes it as it is, as kaya. So if hot matter, hot kaya arises, we observe it as hot. If cold kaya arises, we observe it as cold. If tightness arises, we observe it as tightness. If stiffness arises, we observe it as stiffness. So every arising kaya, matter, has to be observed repeatedly. So um, in this way, this observation like this is called anupasana. And the person who observes in this way is called anupasi. So what is the essence or what is the substance of this anupasana? So this uh, essence, the substance of it has to be complete in order for anupasana to occur. Its substance has has to be there. So the Buddha uh, mentioned this. He talked about this. So there needs to be repeated observation on every evident arising kaya, bit of matter, without a break. This repeated observation without a break. So only if one applies effort to observe the arising object will this happen, effort or or virya. The mind can't be sluggish, it can't be slack, it can't be cool, casual, or late. The Buddha used the word atapi, um, which refers to a type of effort, courageous effort, which can dry up the kilesas with its heat. This is ardent effort. This ardent effort must be there in order for anupasana to take place. The word to describe this effort is atisya. It means exceeding. And so not just ordinary effort. Every second of the time, we have to apply this ardent, courageous effort so that in order for anupasana to occur. This effort doesn't make one's life low. It, It elevates one's life. And therefore, we should practice with ardent effort. So we must have effort to observe the object when the object arises. If one doesn't apply effort to observe it, right at that moment, the mind becomes slack, lazy. The mind becomes slack, and then the kilesas, beginning with laziness, enter the mind stream. So only if one can apply art and effort will anupasana occur, repeated observation. If one applies art and effort to observe the object, then the person will be, the yogi will become satima. There will be sati. This is not sati that is just re, uh, recalling one's past life, recalling one's home, and so on. This sati 
is what arises when we make the effort to get the mind to reach the object and sati then sticks to it. So sati arises when effort is made and the sati sticks to this object. So only if this sati arises will anupasana occur. And then when there is sati sticking to the object, the mind falls collectively on the object. And if in that way, when every, every time a physical action arises, if the mind falls on that presently arising kaya, then the mind doesn't run anywhere. So this, the, the factors of effort, sati, and concentration are all occurring. And when this mind occurs one after another, making this mind occur one after another is called anupasana. So if we consider what the mind is like at that time, the mind is simply falling collectively on the arising object. So there's no wanting to kill, there's no thoughts about killing, there's no thought about stealing, no thought about committing adultery, and there's no thought about lying to others. There's no, uh, there's no, no thought will be there about using drugs or, one, or going wild as a result. So at that time, the mind will be clean. And so the Buddha said that this is what anupasana is. And to observe every physical act every time it arises is anupasana. So the essence or the substance of anupasana is to apply ardent effort. Only if ardent effort is applied will anupasana occur. And because of the application of effort, sati will arise. Only if sati arises also will anupasana occur. With sati sticking to the object, the mind will fall collectively on the object. Only if that happens will anupasana occur. So at that moment that anupasana is occurring, the mind is free of kilesas. The mind is clean. And if one is um, careless and doesn't apply these, apply art and effort so that sati sticks, so that the mind becomes collected, then these benefits won't occur and one will be losing every, every time one is careless. But on the other hand, if one is respectful in trying to develop anupasana, this observing mind will be created, generated, one after another after another. And this is called bhavana. With the help of virya, sati, and samadhi, effort, mindfulness, and concentration, observing every arising physical act when it becomes evident, then anupasana arises for sure. And then one's effort, mindfulness and concentration, virya, sati, and samadhi will become good. Effort will become good, sati will become good, samadhi will become good. And then what occurs is called janya. This is knowledge. So when the rising arises, one's mind falls on stiffness and one knows the stiffness, the true nature that is there, or whatever other, other quality is there. When the mind observes the falling, it falls on the movement or the relaxation that is happening there, and one knows that. Other 
physical actions that arise. One observes them and knows the true nature that is there. Especially at the stage of Udhyabhya Jnana, the knowledge of fast arising and passing away, one's observation becomes very clear. Even small, uh, tiny things are very, very distinct. So this is this type of knowing is called janya. This is vipassana knowledge, and it is part. It is a factor of the forerunner path, puba bhaga maga. So the Buddha used the word sanjanya. This means to first of all to know correctly. What one knows is not known in the wrong way. It's known correctly. And one doesn't just know partially what one knows completely. Also, one knows for oneself. Not through hearing it from the teacher, not from reading about it, but by oneself. Knowing correctly, knowing completely, and knowing for oneself, this type of knowledge occurs. occurs. It can't be denied. And then one comes to see this knowing and the object are different. One sees one observation after another, sometimes sometimes one, one after another. The yogis see that the mind and the object are separate. So one sees clearly, and this is indicated by the prefix pa, in the word sampajanya. One sees very clearly, distinctly, and one also sees in a special way that is distinctly different from what one hear the knowledge that one gains when one hears something or the knowledge that one gains when one reflects something, reflects on something. It's also it's so it is It is a clear knowledge, and it is a distinctly special knowledge. And therefore the the Buddha used the word sampajana for this knowing correctly, completely, by oneself, in a clear and special way. And sampajana is also the word for a person who has this type of knowledge. So this knowledge is um, this is a, a factor. This type of knowledge is a factor or a cause for one to know for oneself, or it is a uh, it is a knowledge that knows in this way. So this type of knowing is a is a cause or a support for Sambodhi. And therefore this type of knowledge is called Sambojanga. Like that, when one observes every evident arising kaya or matter applying a label, labeling it as it is, when repeated observation occurs, there is art and effort to observe the object, sati, which sticks to the object, and the mind becomes collected on the object. Therefore, sampajanya, this type of knowledge arises. Sampajanya is knowledge. One knows that this is rupa, this is hot. And one knows that this, which one observes, that it is impermanent. It arises and then passes away. One sees the characteristic of impermanence, anicca lakana. So on the object which is observed, there is no belief of, of permanence. There's no attachment to it as permanent. So uh, what on this kaya that one is observing effectively, then one knows 
that it is impermanent and one knows um, and one one knows one knows how it arises and passes away one knows how it is impermanent and at that time the the abeja and domanasa the greed and anger that would arise if we didn't observe has no chance if one doesn't observe the arising kaya then anupassana doesn't arise if there's no effort if there's no sati sticking to the object if there's no samadhi then what will arise regarding the the kaya the ob, the object will be uh, which is in pali the the pali the word used on um, was loka this this world of the physical object which has arisen then there won't be any knowledge and instead if it seems pleasurable if it seems like a pleasant thing a good thing then there will be a beja there will be wanting and if it's not this pleasant likable good object then there will be domanasa there will be resentment anger and so if one observes effectively the arising kaya then abeja doesn't have a chance to arise this, this wanting and anger resentment it doesn't have to a chance to arise because knowledge has arisen so it said that not knowing not knowing not noting not knowing kilesas come in they come into the mind stream but when one notes and observes kilesas come clean because of our anupassana the mind is clean and one by one the the kilesas are being removed in a momentary way this is tadanga pahana for that moment the kilesas are being removed and at that time it's like driving a car on a good road with a good car there's nothing there's no obstacles the road is good uh, everything that we need to drive the car easily is is there so we can just go along without having to worry about the road without having to worry about the car functioning and this is what like the practice is like especially at the upper stages of knowledge this is very evident and not only do kilesas not arise <laughs> regarding the object that one has observed but sometimes one misses an object but kilesas still don't arise this is because the kilesas have been distanced and this is called vikambana vinaya the kilesas are uh, are far removed from one's mind so they don't even arise they don't arise on the object that one notes of course but they also don't arise on the object that one misses So these are benefits that the yogis get. Um, they make their mind in doing the practice. They make their minds free of greed and anger, loba and dosa. And that cleanliness becomes so strong that the kilesas are distanced and don't have a chance to arise even even if one misses. So this is the benefit of anupassana. So just as the kilesas don't arise on what one observes they don't arise on what one misses and every time one one observes with anupassana one gets this benefit one without who uh, who doesn't develop anupassana doesn't gain this benefit one one who doesn't take care in the practice one who doesn't use effort So one has to try and try to create anupassana try to develop these factors that make it up 
And if the, if the yogi is not doing that, then it means that the yogi is not respectful regarding the practice. They're not working respectfully or not working meticulously or not working continuously, just starting and stopping. This is a conclusion that the meditation teachers can draw. So Tsyaroji has spoken about kaya and the remaining three types of objects, vedana, chitta, and dhamma. Every time vedana or feeling arises, one has to, and is apparent, one has to observe it just as it is. Every time the mind consciousness arises, then one has to observe it. There should every time there should be this repeated observation. Every general action, every dhamma, every time it arises, there should be repeated observation. So just as there is kaya nupasana, so too there's vedana nupasana, chitta nupasana, dhamma nupasana. And for this to happen, virya, sati, and samadhi, the essence of anupasana has to be present. So the supporting factor, these supporting factors have to be there. The benefits of one, one should know the benefits of satipatthana and have the desire to gain them because then one will do the work. So if one doesn't have faith and confidence in the benefits or in the practice, then one won't do the work. It won't be easy to do the work. So, and, that, and not just faith, there should also be the desire to gain the benefits. So both faith and chanda should be there. If one's faith is half-hearted, then one won't work consistently. So this is why Siyaroji has been speaking about how the practice makes one a true human being. With the practice, one is able to keep one's mind and heart humane, and one is able to develop special human knowledge. So there should be the desire, the chanda, to gain these benefits. And if, if not, then one won't work to gain this type of special knowledge that is, that is a special type of human knowledge. One won't work to And then uh, if one doesn't even try to keep one's mind clean, then it will be even worse. And if one one lets one's morality uh, become broken, then one can't even be considered a true human. So think about how it is when we do the practice. When we do the practice, our sila is good, our morality is complete. And then we are able to make our mind clean and we are able to develop special knowledge. We should understand that this is beneficial and valuable for us. So this is, this, doing this practice is for um, elevating our lives by means of dhamma. So it's very valuable, and if we want something valuable, we have to put in value. We have to have faith, we have to have the chanda or desire to gain the benefits, and we have to try hard. <laughs>